Hey guys, so today we're going to transition into a new unit and we're going to look at what are called tonic sections. So there was a lot of visual stuff kind of linked for you on Schoology. If you want to look at some more things, you can see how these can change, where they come from. Um, so there were a lot of different things you can look at on Schoology if you're more of a visual person. Um, on the notes, we're just going to look more at kind of some of the specific examples and things. Uh, but just a quick intro of what these conic sections are. All right, so let's say you have these cones that are shown here. You've got one cone on top and one cone on bottom. Um, if you take that cone and you cut through it a couple different ways, you'll create a few different shapes. So if you take that and you cut just kind of a, straight across the top like that, think about what a cone would look like if you just cut off the bottom, that would be a circle. If you kind of angle it a bit, it'll be more of an oblong shape, which is an ellipse. If you go through the edge like that, you're gonna create a parabola. And if you go through both cones, top and bottom, you're gonna get kind of a two parabolas, one that goes up and one that goes down. And that's gonna be referred to as a hyperbola. So these are the shapes that we're gonna spend the next few days on. We're gonna to start today with circles because they're the simplest and parabolas because you may have seen those in algebra too. We're gonna to save ellipses and hyperbolas for the next two days. So we're gonna start with circles because they're the simplest. You've probably saw these in geometry. What a circle technically is, uh, is the set of all points that are equidistant from a fixed point. That fixed point is called the center. So all the points that are equidistant from a center would create a circle. Um, the distance between the circle and any point on it is the radius. Um, and then the way you make a circle in terms of conic sections, you cut a circle parallel to the base. That's how you make it with a conic. Um, so in standard form, and I apologize, this has the wrong, well, not the wrong equation, just not the most accurate equation. Your notes should have the correct one. So it's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. That's the one that should be on your notes. On this equation, uh, hk is the center. So h comma k is the center. So notice how both of these are minus. What that means is you're going to use the opposite sign whenever you do this. And then r is the radius. And notice here that r is squared. So if you're trying to find that value, you're going to take the square root of it. All right, so let's look at some examples. So we're gonna write the standard form equation for a circle with a center of two, negative seven, and a radius of four. So we're just gonna plug these into the equation. So x minus two squared plus y minus negative seven, so y plus seven squared, equals r squared, so that equals 16. And that's it. All right, now this time it doesn't tell me the radius. It tells me a point though. So I'm gonna go ahead and write what I know. I know the center's one four. So x minus one squared plus y minus four squared is going to equal r squared. I don't know what r is, but I do know that it has the point negative two, negative three. That's an x and that's a y. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in negative two for x and negative three for y. So if I do that, negative two minus one is three, or negative three, sorry. Uh, negative three minus four is seven, or negative seven. So then if I do that math, I get that r squared is equal to nine plus 49, which is 58. So what that means is the radius would be the square root of 58. But if I'm trying to write the equation, I don't need to square root it because in the equation, it's supposed to be squared. So this equation here, I'm just gonna replace r squared with 58. And that is the equation of my circle. All right, let's try the next one. We wanna find the center of the circle and it gives me the diameter endpoints. Well, if you think about the diameter, the diameter is twice the radius. So if you have this circle, let me just draw a quick little picture. Negative four, seven and 12, negative three. So if that's the diameter, the center, the center is going to be in the center of those two points in the middle. So if we wanna find what's in the middle exactly, we're gonna use the midpoint formula. So the way you find midpoint, you add your x's and you divide by two, then you add your y's and you divide by two. So eight minus, 12 minus four is eight divided by two is four. Seven minus three is four divided by two. So four, two would be the center. And this is a really rough sketch, but it's about right in the same place. Four, two would be the center of that circle because it is halfway in between those two endpoints. 
All right, the hardest thing that we're going to do algebraically throughout this unit is completing the square. So a lot of times you'll see these conics in this uh, kind of general form, and we have to rewrite them into the standard form to find the pieces that we want. So in order to do that, what we have to do is complete the square. So if you remember from Algebra 2, the way we do completing the square, I'll just look at the x's first. I'm going to leave a blank. And then I'm going to move, I should scoot that over, that's okay. I'm going to move that 6 to the other side. We actually have to complete the square twice, once for the x's and once for the y's. But let's start with the x's. In order to complete the square, I'm going to fill in the number that's going to create a perfect square trinomial here. So what I mean by that, um, it's going to factor into something squared like this. And the way to get that number is you take the b value, you divide it by 2, and you square it. So if I take negative 6 and I divide it by 2, that's negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. Well, if you add 9 to the left side of this equation, you also have to add 9 to the right side of the equation so we don't change it. What that creates there is a perfect square trinomial. That factors into x minus 3 times x minus 3, or x minus 3 squared. Now let's look at the next two. All right, to find the value that goes in the, in the box or in the blank, you take the b value, you divide it by 2, and you square it. So that would be 1. If I add 1 to the left, I add 1 to the right. Now those y's are also going to factor. That's going to factor into y minus 1 squared and I have my equation in standard form. Well, now it's pretty easy to find your center and your radius. Okay, my center here would be 3, 1. Your radius would be the square root of 4, which is 2. But the completing the square is a little bit of a harder algebraic step. Now, we will do this a couple more times throughout this unit, um, both with ellipses and hyperbola, so you'll get a lot of practice with it. So now let's transition to parabolas. So you may have seen this in Algebra 2 if you were in honors last year. On level, I don't think you guys would have looked at this, maybe. Um, but we're going to, parabolas, you guys know, are like quadratics. But it's not just a quadratic equation. Um, what we're going to look at today, actually, are some parabolas that open side to side. So what a parabola is with a conic, it's if you take that cone and you slice it parallel to the edge. Um... A parabola is a set of all points that are equidistant from a line and a point. So there's, again, there's a real good visual if you click on Schoology that kind of shows you how this is created based off that line and that point. That line is called the directrix, and that point is called the focus. The focus um, is always going to be inside our parabola, and it is p units away from the vertex. Um, the focus actually is really important, uh, has a lot of real-world applications, and we'll talk about a few of those during class time. So the directrix, that's the line. The line is always outside the parabola. Um, it is also p units away uh, from the vertex. No, I should say, sorry, it's the absolute value of p units away. So uh, you just go in the opposite direction. So if you're in standard form um, for all these equations, hk, this is going to be common through this unit, hk is the vertex. All right, so like I said, a little bit different here. Your parabolas can open up and down. That's what you guys are used to drawing with quadratics. They could open up or they could open down. If they open up, that's when your p-value is positive. If they open down, the p-value is negative. But we also could have these open right and left. Now, if that happens, if the p-value is positive, we'll open right, and if it's negative, then we're going to open left. So I want you to look for a second to see the difference between these two equations and how you can tell which way it's going to open. So here, x is squared. If the x is squared, it opens up and down. Over here, though, the y is squared. So if the y is squared, it's going to open right and left. Now, notice k is always next to the y. So the y-coordinate of the vertex is always going to be near the y. That's also going to be consistent with all the things that we're going to do in this unit. So just to kind of put all these together in a different, little bit of a different form, if x is squared, it's either going to open up or down. If p is positive, it opens up. If p is negative, it opens down. If y is squared, it's going to open either left or right. If it's positive, it opens right. If it's negative, it opens left. So all we're going to do right now is determine the direction, the vertex, and the p-value. So let's start with this, direction. Well, x is squared, p is positive. 
if x is squared and p is positive, this is going to open up. All right, let's do the vertex. We'll find the x-coordinate. Look for the x, use the opposite sign. Look for the y, use the opposite sign. Then our p-value, 4p is equal to 8. Well, that means that p is 2. All right, let's do the, look at the next one. y is squared, p is negative. So if y is squared and p is negative, it opens left. Vertex, again, pay attention to what's x. Look for the x, that gives you the x-coordinate, which is 8. Then look at the y, opposite sign, and it's 6. Then let's find our p-value. 4p is negative 20. So p is negative 5. All right, we're going to do the same thing again, but we're going to add a step to it now. So let's determine the direction. Okay, so for this next one, x is squared and p is negative. So this opens down. The vertex, the x-coordinate with the x, opposite sign. Y-coordinate with the Y, opposite sign. The p-value, 4p is equal to negative 4, so p is negative 1. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find the focus in directrix. So in order to find this, it helps to do it visually. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to graph the vertex, and I'm going to draw a parabola that opens the direction we said. It's going to open down. The focus is going to be inside the parabola. So if it opens down, you move down to find the focus. The amount you move down, that's the p-value. We're going to go down 1 from the vertex. So the focus is at negative 1, 2. For the directrix, we're going to go the opposite direction. So we're going to go 1 up. Now since this opens down, the directrix never touches the parabola. So the directrix is a horizontal line. So it's y equals 4. All right, let's try another one. Let's find our direction. y is squared, p is positive. So if y is squared and p is positive, it opens right. The vertex, negative 4, because we look at the, again, we look at the x's opposite sign, look at the y's opposite sign. 4p is equal to 12, so p is 3. So I'm going to go ahead and just sketch this to make it a little bit easier to find these next parts. So negative 4, negative 2 is my vertex. We're going to open right. My p-value is 3. Since it opens right, I'm going to move right to do the focus. So I'm going to go right, 1, 2, 3. That is my new focus. I went 3 away, so my new point is negative 1, negative 2. The directrix, I'm still going to move 3, but I'm going to go in the opposite direction. So I'm going to go left. 1, 2, 3. I shouldn't touch that point, so it can't be horizontal because that would go through it. So it's got to be a vertical line. Vertical lines are x equals lines, and what x actually equals here is negative 7. All right, so now let's write some equations. So standard form of an equation with a vertex at the origin and a focus of 0, 4. So let's go ahead and graph this. These are a little bit easier to see visually. So vertex here, focus at 0, 4. So if the, if the vertex is at the origin, this has to open with a focus on the inside. So it can't go right, it can't go down, it can't go left. This has to open up. So if it opens up, the x is squared. All right, which means that we've got x squared, and now we need to find the p-value. Well, it's going to be positive because it opens up, so let's see how far away that is from the origin. Well, that distance is 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 times 4 is 16. And then the y-coordinate of that vertex is 0. Whoops, I don't know why I squared that. All right, let's try another. Vertex is at 1, 2, so again, I'm going to graph this. Focus is at 1, 4. So since the focus is above, it's going to open up. 
Now let's find our p-value. Since it opens up that p-value, the distance between the focus and the vertex is 2. So what I would do is I'm going to square the x because it opens up. So x minus 1 squared equals 4 times 2, which is 8. y minus 2, and not squared, sorry. <laughs> There's my equation. All right, let's do another. Same vertex, different focus. Okay, same vertex, different focus. So here's 1, 2 for the vertex, but this time the focus is at 3, 2. Well, if the focus is to the right, this graph is going to open to the right. Okay, the p-value, how far away it is, that distance right there is 2. So since it opens right, we're going to use y squared. All right, my y-coordinate there would be 2. My p-value is 2. And my h is 1. All right, on this next one, it doesn't give me the vertex, but that's okay. Let's draw what we have. The directrix is the line y equals 2. That's a horizontal line. The focus is the point 7, 8. So there's my focus, there's my directrix. I don't know my vertex, but I do know that my vertex is going to be halfway between those two things because all the points are equidistant between those two things. So let's find what's halfway between those. All right, so halfway in between 2 and 8 is going to be right here at 2, 5. Sorry, 7. Whoops. That's 7, 5. Um, I know that's the middle because it's 3 away from both things. All right, I also could find the middle because I did 2 plus 8 divided by 2. Um, so my p-value, we can tell, first of all, which direction it's opening. It's going to open towards the focus, so it opens up. And the p-value here is 3. Since it opens up, x is squared. So x minus 7 squared equals 4p, y minus k. All right, so that is it, guys. Um, again, the parabolas can be a little harder. That's why it's good to get some practice on here. And you'll notice there are two different practice things we're going to do um, because one's going to help us more seeing the graphs and one's going to help us more kind of getting the information from the equation.